Hi, I'm Evan Pantazzi. Today we're going to discuss uh, another aspect to the black snake and the white crane of Wing Chun Kung Fu. And I've gone over many different um, avenues with this and why I keep developing it is to instill in our viewers um, the ramifications of the old Kyushu, the, uh, the old attacks, the old martial arts potentials. All right, now um, when we take a look at um, the black snake, it's akin to the black tiger of the Bubishi and in the effect that it's attacking the blood systems, whereas the white crane has the white crane in both systems. You're attacking the neurological systems. You get a white flash uh, when you attack an, uh, 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 the nervous system and you can cause um, immediate shock which is excellent and it's the way I prefer to use in self-defense because if you're facing one person you want to drop them instantly you don't want to be hanging on to the guy trying to destroy a blood vessel or an organ or trying to use massive strength or power because in a fight situation sometimes your body's limited sometimes the, the opponents are much larger than yourself and to get to these targets is a little bit harder so the neurological shock is much easier in multiple opponents you don't want to be hanging on to a person for seconds when um, you have two or three people rushing at you at the same time so shocking their nerve system to disable them instantly so you have more time to deal with the other incoming threats is a much more viable system. But let's get back into the, um, the black snake and the black tiger. Now, since they both attack the blood system and we both use it in a compressive type of an, an idea, what separates those two? Now, it's much like when you look at um, snake venom. Some snake venom um, attacks the blood vessels so the blood vessels dissolve. Some attack the, the system so that the muscle tissue dissolves. Some attack the system in, in the fact that it, it um, attacks the nervous system and shuts down the blood systems or the central nervous system, which is breathing and digestion, uh, circulation, everything. So there is two different dichotomies. Now, the, the one um, aspect of the tiger, now the tiger is a very powerful animal, so what it seeks to do is to tear these structures apart, okay, cause physical damage through brute or blunt force, okay, and what you're doing is you're using your compressive strength to either tear um, the vessels or the organs or uh, compress them to the point where they seal off or you can cause damage on, say, an organ like um, a liver, splitting the liver, okay, um, rupturing a kidney or a spleen. These are all attacks of the tiger. Now, when you're looking at the snake, the snake it doesn't have this kind of power to um, rip apart these vessels. So you're trying to look for a way that the snake can actually cause the, um, the blood systems, the damage, without that massive trauma that a tiger can inflict. And that's what we're gonna discuss in the extended videos. And also, how it pertains to our Kyusho studies. Why should we study these both instances? And why should we understand the ramifications of a tiger attack, say, against a snake attack or a venom attack on a human being? So stay around for the extended video okay and we'll discuss these ramifications and why we want to really get into it for our q show <laughs> Thank you.